So uh, that wasn't bad. Just over 17 litres for uh, 236 miles. Um, it's certainly in the uh, the low 60s, isn't it? And that's where it kind of sits most of the time. Uh, just had a 500 mile trip up north and uh, that trip uh, was 63 and a half miles to the gallon and I don't hang about, I mean I'm not <coughs> going mental but um, yeah it's uh, pretty reasonable on fuel so uh, point to this update I suppose is to uh, just let folks know I'm getting on with the bike um, I've done a few things to it to improve it I think and uh, I'm still enjoying it I still think it's absolutely cracking uh, touring machine Still staying with the uh, 16 tooth front sprocket and um, much prefer that long term than the original gearing for the type of riding I'm doing. Um, I'm not uh, so bothered about uh, fancy acceleration, I just enjoy. Uh, You know the the mid range, the third and fourth gears are um, really really pleasing. You know um, when you're touring along, the fourth will go from uh, 35 mile an hour to uh, near enough 100. So. Uh, I just like the long leggedness of it all. So what have I done? Um, I had a go at chopping the seat up. Um, I'm tall. I'm six foot one, six foot two. Quite long legs. And I, I blagged a sergeant seat off eBay um, for not a lot of money, to be honest. And I was really pleased. Um, but unfortunately, it really didn't do a lot, you know, for the taller people to uh, improve the uh, the seat height and the comfort. So uh, I thought sod it. I watched a lot of YouTube stuff, had a go myself. Bought some foam, some Evo stick, a lucky carbon knife, and uh, a big. Uh, emery cloth grinding disc and set to um, beauty of it was I could uh, you know, wrap it in cling film take it out, try it take a bit more off take it out, try it and um, after I was happy with it I took it to a a local uh, upholster charged me seventy pound for the cover, and uh, that's much improved. So I took the seat up away, took the slope out of it, and it's really very comfy uh, now. As long as you're prepared to have a go and uh, you know, make a few mistakes, maybe start again. Um, it's not that difficult to do, as long as you know someone who will you know, do the cover, because I'm no seamstress when it comes to stuff like that. So the seat has been uh, thanks for that. Uh, the seat has been uh, quite successful. I've got me uh, 
Michelin tyres on now and they're, they're much nicer again I just keep you know rolling along shifting around six and I don't have any trouble uh, getting along at all but why is the lorry wanting to be on the wrong side of the road that's the reason Yeah, so uh, the seat um, is a success, really. I'm quite pleased with myself. I've never done it before. So I'd say, you know, as long as you've got a sense of humour and a bit of time on your hands, have a go. So I can slide right back. Um, and I've got my uh, patented foot peg. Uh, highway foot pegs uh, on so I can uh, cruise like a like a Harley boy so probably just see him down there I'll put a picture up put my legs out and just cruise they're really good so had a stretch on the motorway here yeah the other day coming back from Derbyshire and you know it's uh, slow traffic and um, it's a bit tedious as you know but just be able to just you know uh, put your legs out have a good old stretch um, really really nice we can always stand up as you know but uh, not always practical I'd say uh, probably 40% of the time I'm riding the bike. I've got my feet on the highway pegs. It's, you know, uh, cruising along. So, what I have done, I've uh, ridden these now for a couple of years. You know, I'm not that unhappy with the original suspension, but anyone who's got one will gets one will probably find that the rear is a little bit hard sprung and the front probably the opposite a little bit soft sprung generally most of the time it, you know it, it's fairly plush does a decent enough job and uh, you know uh, acceptable so I had the uh, been on the forums and there's quite a few done the uh, R1 rear shock conversion so I've been looking at that for a while and I thought went on eBay and I picked one up and I thought got a sod it I'll have a go because out of the two it's the rear that's probably the most annoying in some ways so I uh, fished this R1 shock out um, bought a, a damaged preload uh, versus shock uh, off eBay and nicked the needle bearings out of that and um, the spring and then uh, got the shock uh, board out take the uh, versus collars and uh, shoved it on and unfortunately um, it wasn't right um, I think probably because I'm such a big unit I've got the panniers on all the time toolkit uh, engine bars centre stand and I'm not, I'm not light I'm 17 stone um, it just uh, didn't work out so you know so my next move I, I suppose was take the R1 shock and um, 
get it serviced and maybe uh, stiffen up the uh, rebound and compression. Well, that'd be around 200 quid. Um, I was already 130 quid in and it's 14 year old. So I decided that I cut my losses, call it quits, and try a, a YSS which I've used on the, um, the CRF 300s. And uh, I bought one of them. A little bit worried it might be oversprung because this, this spring is stiff, you know, on the original shock. And um, the YSS is actually a 180. The OE is a 160 uh, Newton meter. But what the uh, internet wisdom says. But um, anyway, it worked out. So unlike the original shock, you know, where uh, you can't really back the preload off any further than the collar allows so it's, it's fairly stiff and you can't back it off whereas the YSS has got plenty of adjustment to uh, go either way so uh, brought it out on the moss and uh, I just kept hitting you know uh, the, you know the big hits um, some of which are down here and uh, all I did was on each run was back the preload off one until I could provoke it to bottom out and then called it called it a day because you know uh, you're not going to hit much out there much harder than some of the bumps on this road and uh, if you don't know the road you're more likely to be slowing down anyway so anyway cutting to the quick after uh, doing that what I decided was that the uh, softer preload and the rebound control uh, have to go further than I thought when you push the back of the bike you know the rebound really does work and um, I mean this is proper bouncy you can see the scars in the road and this is where it scores because the rebound now so they're getting that bouncy sort of uh, wallow and um, you know the uh, wanted to catapult you out your seat uh, a little bit so you have to kind of I don't know uh, pretty firm spring and uh, pretty firm compression with like not enough rebound control so I've been spent you know uh, a couple of hours you know just running around setting it up um, that's what I found is um, So the way I set it up um, was to run these kind of roads, you know, find all the horrible bits like this, and there's some big bumps on here, and then uh, you know, running them pretty hard because these are bumpy. See that just wanted to bottom out there but not quite and I do want it to bottom out you know maybe once so that it uses you know all the travel this is a big hit Whee. <laughs> all the travel um, but you know uh, without bottoming out every every time you uh, you go fast so try to set it so that it um, using the majority of its travel uh, the majority of its time will, 
the enough support to uh, enough support to uh, you know keep it uh, from getting out of hand on the bump stop. So having done that, it was then a matter of uh, trying to set the rebound on the thing and to control all this luggage and weight I've got this tool kit there and you know stuff in the panniers I'm carrying probably 12 to 15 kilograms permanently on the back of there then you've got me um, as I say a big unit and the accessories weigh quite a bit, especially the centre stand. So the rebound, I ended up at uh, seven from full hard, and it works really, really well. It really does keep, you know, the whole, the back end in check, and um, it also stops the patter, you know, when. Um, you're going over this choppy stuff like this stuff here it just stops the pattern and it's a much much more compliant shock absorber so all in all um, that's uh, really has sort of uh, done well um, I never had such a big issue with the front, I just knew it was soft and I kind of liked it soft. Um, and I don't know it's soft, they, they were kind of just mismatched a little. And uh, it's only when you provoke them, you know, you uh, got a little bit out of hand. I mean, the. Uh, So with the rebound again, I just took a little bit of time, it, it went further in than I thought. This kind of thing here, this little uh, railway crossing, I mean that would have had to be sort of out of his seat a little bit before, but now, um, well these are horrible, absolutely fucking horrible, trust me. And it just kind of is much more compliant, much, much less bouncy. So the YSS shock for, uh, you know, my weight and my uh, um, wide riding sort of setup with all the luggage and blah, blah, blah that I've mentioned is pretty damn successful, to be honest. Um, at 299 quid, it's, uh, um, extremely sort of comp um, 299 quid it's really a no brainer I mean you know it's nice to be able to have an option you know to improve your bike where you don't have to sell a bloody kidney you know like uh, you don't need these are horrible I mean absolutely bloody horrible and it just absolutely laps it up. You know, you're bound to get a kick off it, but the actual sort of damping and um, it's soft, you know, uh, it's very, very good. I say, I've had them on the CRFs, and um, it's easy to be plusher, you know, when you've got 10 and, you know, 10, 10, um, 10 inches of travel so I was a little bit unsure big hit here bang and um, really is a lot better I mean this fella here you know, on the bridge and this is sudden but see how it just sits again so very very good 
very, very good. Another big hiss here. This one again will kick me out of my seat, but it hasn't. And another one here. You get the idea. This is a bumpy old road. Uh, the video, as usual, you know, doesn't tell you. Um, it doesn't tell you, you know, uh, how big them hits are. So, uh, YSS, uh, 299 quid, 180 newton speed of spring, standard spring on it. And uh, I'd recommend it to anybody. I just think um, once you've got it set up, once you've figured it out, um, again, you know, more normal speeds, you know, 30 mile an hour, this is horrible, horrible stuff, this, and you can tell by the front screen that, you know, it's kicking, but it's much, 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 much more compliant, just take these two horrible holes in the middle, and, uh, the improvement is uh, um, really nice. It's a marked improvement. So there's uh, a bit of uh, confusion when ordering these. There's a 295 and a 300. Um, this is uh, I believe the same from 15 to 23. Please check. The 300 mil eye to eye. I think that's 32 mil and a 30, or the other way around. I can't remember now. But the 30, 32 and 30 mil bushings, 12 mil eyes. Um, I'll put the uh, code of this shock up. Well, this is a 300 mil original shock on here one with the hydraulic preload and um, this one fits and works well you can probably see um, I've actually gone three rings back from the factory setting here um, and that suggests you know that um, you know, we're in the zone one thing you notice is that um, even on the side stand if you do this on the original shock, there's hardly any movement, but you can see there's much more compliance there in the first part of the stroke. And um, it feels like that on the road. Um, anyway, uh, I just thought I'd uh, let you know what I've put on in case um, anyone's thinking of doing the same. Um, That's it really, front forks are uh, nothing to see, um, the uh, spring is easily replaced if you get hold of that um, tool or make your own from the lorry nut. Worth yeah. mentioning is the uh, ride height can be adjusted 5mm up and 5mm down, 5mm um, on here will bring the swinging arm down about 12 mil so you could reckon that the seat would go up uh, 12 mil so you can raise or lower the ride height of the bike um, about 12 mil either way so you've got about 24 mil uh, 24 mil difference in, in ride height um, I tried jacking it up found it uh, made it just a tiny bit too tall for me so I put it back to the original 300 I was a bit worried the spring would be too soft but um, it isn't so uh, I put it back to uh, the 300 mil center so uh, having the uh sorted the rear um, I was looking round for an option 
just to uh, stiffen the front a little and um, I've used the uh, Hyper Pro before on a different bike uh, Progressive Springs and uh, I'll be honest I, I wasn't very pleased with uh, that outcome um, Race Tacker in America well regarded I've had springs off them before on my dirt bikes but uh, nowadays they're just postage is ridiculous so um, the only other option I could see this is uh, nasty stuff riding in the gutter the only option I could see um, uh, was Wilbur's which I've heard of had it used before but what put me off is that again the progressive wound you know anyway uh, long story short 90 quad, 91 quid later it took a punt and uh, the spring arrived uh, I'm not going to bore you with all the details um, if you search some of the forums the internet you'll find uh, uh, you'll find the manual 15, 16 onwards, which are exactly the same forks. The only tricky part is that in the Kawasaki it has a, an internal locking ring and the tool um, required to um, get to the spring is 100 and odd quid, uh, more off Kawasaki. Um, but the internet wisdom has it. Uh, a lorry wheel nut is what you need, 33 mil. Um, I found one on Amazon for about five quid and weld a nut on top of that for the spanner. Uh, the only other thing you probably really need is a, you know, a vice, a soft jawed vice would be handy. And you turn out that uh, retaining cap and uh, the spring. Uh, is as easy as peas to fit then. Uh, Wilbur's wanted 50 quid for two litres of oil. I had lots of uh, 10 weight right lying around um, at home, so that was the weight they recommended, so I went with that. I did uh, the right leg as well. I, what I mean by that, I just changed the oil to match. So it's just a matter of draining the oil, recharging the uh, uh, damper rod system and setting the gaps. What I did find, if you set the gaps, try and leave the right leg overnight because it will drop. And in my case, it dropped uh, 25 mil. So it's worth being patient, you know, uh, when you change the oil. Uh, anyway, um, got the thing in and I wasn't really looking forward to the test ride so much because uh, after the Hyper Pro um, debacle, um, the expectations weren't particularly high. I was just having a go kind of thing. And uh, surprisingly, um, we seem to have found a pretty good winding on this spring. It is progressive. It's not as aggressive as um, as the uh, uh, Piper Pro were, and it's a single spring. But anyway, whatever it, it is, it, it works. It's, it's substantially better. Um, what I mean by that is that I never really minded the soft suspension too much you know, on the original, I quite like the plushness of it. And it was never the biggest niggle that the rear was. But, um, you know, if you hit a sh something sharp edged, you know, a, a fur lick, you know, uh, it was blowing a little bit too easily through the stroke and soft then became a little bit harsh. And this stuff here is, uh, pretty horrible to be honest 
But what happens is, uh, what's pleasing about these is they uh, support the bike much better on those big hits, but still retain that sort of OE plushness, you know. Um, so, you know, uh, I was pretty surprised by um, the outcome of that because, uh, as I say previously, um, obviously it could be different uh, valving in the forks and that on the other bike, Faradero it was, uh, more basic uh, forks, but, you know, once bit and twice shy, isn't it? Um, but yeah, very good. Um, the compliance is... Uh, equally as good as the uh, original um, spring and the same deal really is um, setting up the rear shock um, hit it hard on some of the, the boss roads and um, try and provoke it to you know bottom out but the rebound spring on these is pretty good, so you don't usually bottom out, out you know, with a, with a big thud. So just using a zip tie um, was probably the best way. And uh, anyway, long story short, I ended up, you know, bearing in mind my weight and all the rest of it I've mentioned, I ended up at only six. Um, I ended up with only six um, in from full soft, which is about, to be honest, Kawasaki's uh, standard setting on the OE forks. And the same deal again, because I've got a progressive sort of um, uh, stronger spring overall, particularly, you know, when it's worked hard, I've had to increase the, the uh, rebound quite a lot. And I've just um, about three quarters of a turn out from full hard on this now. And similar to the uh, the rear, um, the result has been pretty damn good. Where you really notice it a lot is when you brake. Um, um, when you're going faster, you know, it hits a sharp edge in that, it holds up better, it doesn't blow through quite as quick. And probably the most noticeable part is when you uh, brake. So, for instance, like, find somewhere to put the brakes on. It will squat, like now, squat, but it just holds. Whereas it went along a longer way before, but um, it just holds the front up, and it definitely is an improvement when you're braking. So what is good is that uh, it doesn't blow the whole thing through the stroke. So it's a big hit. So I can brake hard now, and it still takes, you know, some hits, it's still got some plush left, even though, you know, it, it's compacted um, quite aggressively, so, yeah, um, see the reason I'm putting up this up there is for two reasons, is that before I did all this stuff, I was looking for somebody to, uh, that had done it, maybe to um, give me something to work with. I go this way, I think. I was looking for someone, you know, to give me something to work with. And the information is is pretty sparse on on both these things. The, you know, the Wilbur's Fork Spring and the YSS. I mean, they're not unheard of either of them, but actual sort of. Uh, feedback from people who 
taken a punt, if you like, was uh, in a lot of cases, you know, applicable to much different bikes like FJRs and stuff like that. See how that bump there, how the back would come up and sort of bounce, um, you know, just wallow a little bit before it settled. And now, um, it just sort of takes the bump and then levels out. I say, uh, very, very happy with that, to be fair. Uh, I'll be seat there. <laughs> um, so, to be fair, um, I uh, like the Wilbur's front fork. I mean, all in for a hundred pounds with the oil, and I, uh, I think it's, I think it's worth it. I think it's, um, you know, it's improved it. it considerably um, under most sort of operating circumstances um, if it didn't make any difference or it was no difference or it was worse I'd just say so but, um, for once in my life you know what I mean I actually seem to have got something right um, something that you know uh, it's nice to have something that actually you know, going through all the asking about swapping things round, and it's nice to have something that actually uh, comes off, if you like, pays off. So, um, yeah, uh, that will be spring. There's no rate as such because it's progressive. And if you try and set the sag traditionally, you know, for the 30% or whatever it is, and you crank the preload up because of the way the springs wound it doesn't really um, make a big difference you know to the ride height on the fork um, so the best way you know to go in about it is like I say bounce it until you, you think um, you've got the minimum preload you can get away with and then set the rebound and that's uh, that's worked for me um, so that's it really uh, would I do it again both ends yes I would no it, no, no danger whatsoever for 400 quid um, it's very difficult to knock 